Hello everybody and welcome to another RCT2 review. Today we've got a uh, special treat for us. Uh, we are looking at Seasons by FK. Uh, this is a recent uh, Gold Award winning park on New Element uh, and it's a really cool blend of fantasy realism and just sort of cool landscape experiential design and stuff. And the fun part about today's review is that we are joined by FK himself. Hello. So I'm going to uh, kind of work our way through the park and FK is going to add some nice commentary and um, fun facts and all the fun stuff that you get from talking to the builders of the park, um, which I always appreciate doing. Um, as you can kind of see here, it's it's four seasons, uh, obviously, seasons uh, being the park name. So we've got summer here at the bottom, fall, winter, and spring. Um, what led you to this as a theme? Well, so um, the background history of the park is it was originally started during uh, Ennie's Head to Head 8. Um, so it was originally a park collaboration between myself, um, Avenine Commuter, and MK98. And then um, there's some various dramas that eventually was scrapped as a park during it, um, primarily because another season-based park was released. Um, so I continued it from there. Um, really, the focus around it was the idea of exploring each of the seasons, um, not really as a place. You know, it isn't New York, Chicago, you know, Milan. Like, it isn't four different countries or places in seasons, but rather each season is kind of an exploration of the themes and ideas that go into that season um so if fall looked like a place what would fall look like and so forth i like it and, and as we'll kind of see as we go through it it's a lot of varied thematic stuff so like you said it's not one particular place across all the areas it's it's very unique and distinctive in in each spot um so i'm gonna pick summer to start i, I actually we had talked about this beforehand about where to start and you pointed out that there's no entrance to the park like a traditional theme park would be, so it's kind of up to the user to figure out where they want to begin. And I think the first time I downloaded the park, I started in, in summer here as well. Um, but it just kind of feels like a very inviting, natural place to begin. Yeah. The entrance, it, it was specific not to have an entrance because... Um, like the ring shape of the park, it's supposed to sort of replicate the idea that time doesn't stop and the seasons are continuous. And that's sort of a common theme throughout the park is, um, you know, even as you look at the foliage or different parts of the architecture, it kind of transitions from period to period, um, like a continuous ring. So in summer here, we've got this sort of, I feel like it's almost Southern Italy type feel almost with uh this boardwalk uh, along the side here i love the height difference in uh elevation here with the sort of seawall that comes along it's actually got a nice um for being essentially flat otherwise it's got a nice terrain variation to it with all the nice colored umbrellas and everything i mean the, ob obviously color plays a big role in this park as a whole and i think this area being sort of the most colorful architectural uh space really really sells it for what it is yeah, the um, I would say uh, you're right on with southern Italy um, or c coastal Italy. Um, the things I looked mainly was like French Riviera and Italian Riviera, um, particularly Portofino mm -hmm. was a source point for when we were first conceptualizing it. Um, I think the boardwalk is a little more like American-esque. Mm -hmm. um, and then I almost feel like the... Um, the seawall reminds me a lot of like southern UK um, seawalls. Sure, I can get that. It's sort of that it has that little bit of industrial look to it, a little bit broken up in some places, but has a very nice structural look to it. I love the, the Ferris wheel with the face on it and everything. Kind of just a fun, I don't know, it's just fun. It's a nice lighthearted detail. Yeah, I have to give credit to MK for that. He came up with that, and I know some people thought it was cheesy, but I think it represents well the uh, seriousness of the park. It's you know supposed to be fun and exciting yeah. more than supposed to be some serious thing. 
Well, there's lots of good details. I love the the folded up umbrellas here on the side, and then all the little shops with their various parts and pieces here. Is there a story why these umbrellas over here are black and white, and these are all multicolor? Originally, um, actually, there's a couple things. Originally, it was sort of this idea that the main area by the Ferris wheel would sort of be like the public beach, and on the right would be more of like a private upscale beach. Hmm. Um, eventually, yeah, I think there were, we had a lot of ideas for the beach that kind of got scrapped, or as we were looking through the park, um, or particularly me later, I just was like, I don't think it needs it. Um, one of the details, though, that did not get in that I kind of regret, um, MK had offered to make a scenery piece of some of the prominent features in the other seasons, and we were essentially going to do a sand castle competition where the three entries were like the ice castle from winter as a little sand castle um sort of kind of like a self-referential meta thing um and then when it came down to the final moments of like editing and putting it all together i fully forgot to ask him to do it and then, oh, that's a shame that's a cool i don't think detail. it's a huge i don't think it's a huge loss but it was definitely something we were both excited about oh, that's definitely cool and then I see you've got the different folks from New Element and other places in here as uh, entertainers. Mm -hmm. um, it's all of the um, ultra-realist team oh, nice. in here. Okay. A lot of them, since it was a team park, a lot of the ideas um, and concepts and feedback that happened on the early end of the park um, are represented in here. So it made sense to include everyone. And one of the other things that I like here before we move on from the beach is just, I, I mean, in general, around the outside of the park, you get this great fragmenting of the ocean into kind of the nothingness. I really like how you treated the the wave, uh, the waves coming up on the sand uh, using these pieces. It's, it's got a nice, a nice real subtle detail to it, and it's looks good. Thanks. Yeah, I think um, one of the things you'll notice as we go through the park is um, for me personally, there was a huge push on like gradients and texture treatments. I really wanted there to feel almost like a painting-esque moment in a lot of areas. Um, the foliage in particular has that, and the landscaping, um, but that's like a good example of it is mm -hmm. instead of just having water and then sand, there's sort of some interim pieces that show that water and sand are merging. That's great. So... The log flume here kind of transitions in between different areas, which I, I like. I think that's a cool way to blend in between. But since it's uh, got its station here in summer, I think we'll look at this uh, to start. But I like this, the April showers, which really also in the name transitions between the two uh, spaces, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, but there's, this is a lot of stuff to look at in this flume. I really like the, the uh, bobsled tracks here for this little helix thing. Um, that wraps around and then it kind of goes up underneath to this steep lift hill before we take it over here into the summer area. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah, the, the log flume is just fun. Uh, there, like, I've always had this idea of doing the um, bobsledded log flumes. It makes no sense. It's not realistic. A flume like that would not slide up or down, but... <laughs> it's just one. fun to think of different ideas for what we could do with the flume since particularly with log flumes they're they're very like they turn they go up they go down the upward one confuses me a little bit this guy here um uh, not gonna lie but i will say the downward one uh, there was a log flume at space world in japan that had a downward full 360 degree helix and it was on like a channel, like a coaster track almost, and you just kind of cruise down this thing uh, with a little bit of banking, and it totally reminds me of that. So I think it's more realistic than you think. Well, I'll take it. There you go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I love these little uh, turnarounds here with the the double S bend and then the the turnaround. So you get the theming in the middle of there, the theming in the middle of here, and then you load up the the lift hill here for this final drop into your. Uh, I guess this is the May showers part, and uh, mm -hmm. you're gonna get soaked here at the end, and then back up underneath. It's it's 
done really well to blend into the space. I like how it threads these two buildings here. And then it uh, doesn't have a whole lot of presence down here. It doesn't block your beach, but it kind of sits nicely in there before it cruises on back to the, the home. I have to give um, some credit to Robbie and Bush Gardens Asia, because as I admitted to him, I just saw the look of his log flume in there, and I was like, that looks good. I just want to redo that, but fantasy. I mean, who doesn't that's, like That's what I did. Who doesn't like to take what Rob does and, and do it again, because it's incredible. <laughs> so yeah. let's, uh, let's move over into fall, or autumn, I guess, if we want to be correct. Um, a lot of cool stuff in here. I, actually, the autumn area is kind of my favorite aesthetic in here. Spring is my favorite area, I think, for reasons we'll get into later. But I just really love the architecture and the overall kind of festival feel of this one. I mean, it feels just like a big harvest festival. And I really I like that kind of thing. And then we get into our first poster here um, with uh, Harvest, obviously Harvest Festival. Um, really cool launch coaster here. Nice, nice layout also. Um, and then just all the other stuff that's integrated into it, like this uh, maze below, and then the super cool diagonal tent, which I know has a little bit of backstory to it. Yeah, um, I would say I agree with you. I think I knew I was doing good work when I couldn't decide what season was my favorite, but mm -hmm. I think definitively fall is probably my favorite. Um, because this is where I started building it. When we started, it really, uh, it, it felt like, well, people have done spring, they've done summer, and they've done winter. But fall is really the one that's been the hardest to tackle because you have to do really intense, weird leaf colors on the trees. Um, but so this was where we started because I was like, if we can figure out how to do fall well, then I think everything else will fall into place. No pun intended. Um, regarding the tent. So I sent you a picture um, up until, uh, I don't know, a week or two before I submitted this. I had in place of this essentially three um, tents, the, the circus tents from the default game. I had overlapped them could try and make it a little bit bigger and a little bit more imposing. But ultimately, um, I was having people take a look at it and in the manual sort of made a comment like, you know, this area um, that's kind of right in between the tent and summer feels a bit empty. And I was thinking the same thing. And I had play, I had said, like, I probably should replace this tent because it doesn't look great in retrospect now, but I was dragging my feet and that was kind of thing that pushed me to do it. And so this was one of the last big changes that went in, but I'm really happy with the outcome. I think it was definitely an overall major improvement and it really adds a lot of um, intrigue, I think, Beautiful to structure. fall. Yeah. It also makes me happy because peeps, it's, it's, Inside of it is an invisible motion simulator. Um, motion simulators are just crack for peeps. If you want a <laughs> line of peeps, you put a motion simulator in wherever you want, and they will get in line for it. There and so go. I was happy because before, no one would go into the circus, and now they love that circus. Astros Traveling Circus. Great. And I, I, I do love all the little carts and everything, uh, little wagons uh, throughout. I think that's... A really cool feel and then to your point earlier about the fall colors um i mean the the landscaping and foliage i think is really what sets this park apart as far as one of the things that i really thought was was just a standout kind of thing with the park and, and here it gets a really good look at just all the different colors of everything um using the the reds the oranges the yellows and everything is, is this the standard palette or is this a is this have a custom palette it is a custom palette, but the only custom elements are to improve the ice okay. um, in the winter section. So ITM made that for me, um, essentially using the same bunching of blue changes um, that Haystack does from Got Head it. to Head 7, or Head to Head 8. Yeah, it, it um, definitely looks, you, you've, you feel a lot of the warm colors in there, but you haven't taken it away from the palette elsewhere. I think it works nicely. Yeah, I think a lot of credit has to go to MK 
if you look at like a bunch of the of trees, maybe like we're inside and behind the helix of harvest, um, you can kind of see when you're focusing in on them that there's leaves falling. He spent a lot of time uh, making an animated leaf piece, and I think it's what is like the magic behind this is that if you actually stop and look at it, the leaves are falling in this section, which is just so cool. It's a great little bit of motion that you don't necessarily see when you're kind of breezing through the park, but when you stop and look at it, it just really brings it home. And then using the pieces here that you have to uh, get the leaves sitting on the on the pathway uh, really is just nice. It's, it's a good look. Again, love the wagons here. This little apple orchard with the, um, the tractor back here is super cool. And then spinning around to where we were before, you've got this little hedge maze here, like almost a corn maze with the scarecrow and everything in it, uh, kind of juxtaposes well against the uh, the more stock maze up here, the other corn maze. I think it's a it's a really cool way to do both of those. I love the covered bridge, and and I will say my favorite thing I think in the entire area, and probably what I'm going to use as the thumbnail is this little bit here, this waterfall into this little chasm with this great um, small cabin on the side and uh the falling leaves and everything is just such a picturesque scene and you just kind of want to chill and relax sit on that porch and watch the leaves yeah uh that is without a doubt my favorite thing in the park um we i kind of based it on um they're i, I think i named them like glacier sandstone canyons mm -hmm. yeah um which is if you ever been in the midwest there's a place called starved rock that's about an hour drive from chicago and that's kind of what is there is these like weird canyon waterfalls um and i don't know we just came up with the idea and i started building it and it's easily my favorite like part of the park and if you look in the cabin that's where i placed my entertainer there I you go just like this is where i should be is in this cabin relaxing i love it and the coaster layout's you know pretty pretty solid also. It's a nice um, it's a nice look to have the realistic coaster in here, kind of buried amongst the uh, fantastical landscape. But the thing is, is that all the different areas feel realistic. Like they have a a grounds in that. I mean, this feels like it could be any kind of um, you know north uh, north Midwest, even New England town with uh, with this great feel to it so i mean the, it feel it doesn't feel out of place is what i'm getting at um you know, all the little pumpkin patches and just the layered details and everything i think are very nice thanks yeah i'm i'm glad it comes across that way i think with for me personally um you know like i've kind of cut my teeth in the fantasy mindset of rct um but i don't think i mean i think of myself as as less of a fantasy builder so much as someone who just builds what comes to mind um and with this in particular i didn't want it to feel like it was a world that could not exist or you know there's no narrative to what this is some of my past parks i've sat down and i've said here's the story of what of why this exists and it's some narrative that you might be like a book um this i really wanted to feel like fragmented moments of reality um you know, I, and really a focus on not necessarily doing what was realistic, but doing what felt right for the park. Um, and I, I can point out like a good example of that in a minute, but when we get to winter, but sure. yeah, I'm glad that it doesn't feel it, it. I think it feels very much like sort of a middle ground. And that's kind of what I want. Well, and it might be funny for me to say, but I feel like people get too bogged down in realism versus fantasy versus semi-realism whatever it is i mean it, it is what it is is it grounded in you know certain inspiration and themes and i i think you've done a really nice job to take the inspiration here that um you have which is clearly defined and very distinct and recreate it very well which which i like um so let's move on to Oops. to winter here which is a wildly different change from where we were before just with how monochromatic it is but you still managed to really get a lot of detail in here. Um, and I think that's where I, I enjoy this area more than I thought I was going to initially. And, and we're not even looking at the coolest part, in my opinion, yet. Um, these slides 
are really cool. The, the ice slides here. Um, I like the way that you've got the drops on these intertwining through the bobsled track. Um, it really takes that to another level, gives it a lot of layering aspects of it. Um, and the, the ice flows here coming across as tunnels and everything are just very, very cool with the little orange fences brought in there for that pop of color. Thanks. Uh, I have to say, Glacier Co. by Stormrunner Fan was a big inspiration for those. Uh, right around the time that I was building this, that came out. And I was looking for ideas, um, really a big part of winter, and this is uh, ABC's influence. Um, we really didn't want it to be like a Swiss ski resort or an American ski resort, because we felt like those had been done before. Um, and so I was looking for things to put in here that wasn't like skiing and doing the luges made sense, but also Glacier Cove was such an inspiration to like see how he did those tunnels and think, could I do something similar? And that was a wildly cool park. I think it was, it was really, really neat and a good separation from a lot of what we had seen in water park building in RCT and not just the use for water parks, but for stuff like this too. Um, and you've got this great you know, giant castle architecture here, easily the biggest architecture in the park by a fair distance. And then it really does a great job of kind of nestling in some of this skating rink, which has uh, the cool um, skating lines in here. And you can kind of see the frozen lake, how it goes underneath the bridge here. And then there was the waterfall on the side. And you can see through the ice down here to the coaster. And then I'll, I'll turn to this side because I, I think this really for me brings home the the area best in just looking at how cool this coaster is sort of weaving in and out of the ice flows and how well everything fits because you've got a lot of this um quarter tile scenery i mean you get rid of that and it gets rid of most of your detailing there but it just sits really well it doesn't feel the quarter tile heavy which i think is is one of the issues that that kind of stuff typically brings um, but it's just blended really well, especially with the, the monorail track here as a nice detail just to get that smooth curve that fits with the coaster. I mean, the coaster and the landscape here, more than any of the other ones, seem like the most integrated into the whole space. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think more than any of the others, this shows like the texturing thing I was trying. Um, I I think that the caves could have been more successful, but it was hard to put them in here. I really wanted it to feel like a dark blue at the back of the cave, and then it gradients out to a lighter blue where the cave is no longer there. Um, but this, I think, was like the biggest question mark for me when I finished and was starting to sort of shop it around. Was like, it does is this too busy? Um, and I I think it is just not busy enough um to work because <laughs> there are i mean if you look there, there's probably only a few tiles in this whole map that aren't filled with something or multiple things on every single available mm -hmm. slot and like if you look at the ice at towards the bottom of this coaster every piece is just covered in 1k nets and uh grasses and ice pieces and um a lot of rct guide or i think it is water pieces mm -hmm. um very much i was trying to get this sort of painty feel to it um anywho i'm just thinking out loud but it's a, i think it was successful here i'm interested to try and do stuff similar to this in the future now that i have this under my belt well and since you mentioned it i i didn't hadn't really picked up on it fully before you said it about the distinct effort to make the caves darker in the back coming forward into the lighter colors because there's only there's only so many blues that you've got so it's pretty tough to do that look but i i, I kind of like that detail here because if this was all the solid same color ice blue you'd lose this column here in the middle that's supporting up the edge of the lake here and you'd miss some of these other details i don't think it would be quite as defined going through this dive loop um and it yeah. works really well, in my opinion. And then also just the transition from from here on over, how it you go from all blue blues and whites and snow and ice to a little bit of the brown of the trees that have lost their leaves kind of back out over to 
all kind of backing up in time on this side. Um, I, I think that's very cool. Yeah, the transitions are one of my favorite part. And uh, quickly going back to something I said earlier, like the idea of doing what felt right for the park. You know, like originally when we had thought through this, the entire coaster was going to, well, originally uh, ITM said, no coaster, don't put a coaster there. And I kind of ignored him. Um, though I think he was saying because I was going, building too slow for head to head. Um, but anyways, the idea of this coaster was that the whole thing would be underneath the lake. And, um, you know, we had even talked about the idea of a cutaway view at some point. And I think it just got to the point where, like, it didn't make sense to do that. Now, if you look where the ice goes and then where the coaster is, there's parts where, like, well, if the plane of the top of the lake continued forward, like right before the corkscrew, it would go right through the top of that hill. Mm -hmm. And so from a perspective of like, why would this go this high and would it fit there? It doesn't make any sense, but it looks good and it made, it made sense visually. And so that was really like part of my focus with this park was making sure that the visuals and what ended up looking and feeling right was what was in the park. Well, and I think it sense. does. Um, the, the layout's super cool. I love the way that it kind of flows through this thing. I mean, it's super speedy. It really has that almost RMC feel to it where it's, Maybe a little too fast, but at the same time, the the layout elements. I love this little bit here of the curve into the loop that's bookended on the ice, and then you have this twisted airtime hill where you get just enough pause over the top. It's, it's, it feels nice. I, I like this little sequence there. Thanks. Uh, this coaster has, is... I, I don't know if I asked you about this. I asked a few people. Uh, I changed the using like a hack from the console i changed the massing mm -hmm. i think it is on the coaster so that it would make it through the loops because if you if you closed it and opened it again and it regenerated the cars they would not make it through um it's just that i've made the cars essentially heavier and the i feel RMCs. very proud of figuring out how to do that <laughs> well the rmc vehicles got a lot of friction that's funny yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think that is one of the challenges, and I, I didn't really think about that until you mentioned it, because it is super speedy through a pretty darn long layout, actually. Um, but uh, it works, and, and I can't say it crossed my mind that it would have been speed-adjusted beforehand, but it doesn't look out of place. Um, so why why the big castle as, like, your your one kind of architectural element here? Is this kind of meant to anchor the whole park considering it sits up on a hill and kind of looks over everything um it, yes in some ways um yeah i can't i don't like i said there's not a narrative to the park so there wasn't a lot of thought as to what like narratively why we've made a castle um avc really wanted a nice castle uh i know that at the time we had some worries because this was also the head-to-head -head were frozen came out mm. or Arendelle. And so we were like, is there going to be like six ice castles? Should we not do an ice castle? <laughs> um, I think that the focus and, you know, uh, a lot of ABC's work before this park got scrapped was looking at different textures and different ways to do this part of the park. And it was mainly because we wanted to get a very organic feel. He really wanted a very sort of smooth, almost like an icicle kind of looking castle. Um, and we felt like compared to some of the other areas, we needed something that was a bit of more of a big architectural thing. Um, I ended up kind of, you know, you can see some of the influence, like there's some um, sort of towards the middle of the castle, there's like an icicle type formation mm -hmm. made out of um, a hedge and then an upside down hedge. But I kind of ended up pushing it a bit more towards like architectural lines that have some ice feel to them than I think ABC would have done. I think um, what's what step strikes out to me on this one is how well the various textures work together because it doesn't have the different colors to really differentiate them in your in your head. Like really, typically you wouldn't take thatch with standing seam metal with glass with hedge with all these other different textures together but 
when it's in that mm -hmm. same coloration and, and colorway, it really works together to give it that that feel that just looks a little different than the object would in a typical use. Definitely. I will emphasize, uh, it looks like it's really monochrome, but there are a ton of color variations in it. Oh, I'm sure but there I think must that, be. Like, that's like the math of monochrome is if you're doing monochrome by actually using one color, it doesn't look like monochrome. Um, oh, sure. It's got to have all the different kind of, you, you need to create shadow and relief and things like that. And all these different rows and everything here, you can kind of see where the darker blue is is in play mm -hmm. and everything. So it, it works pretty, really well, I think. Um, but yeah, let's let's roll out of this and kind of come down this super cool little pathway with the archways and everything, which I'm a big fan of, to the melting snow as we run into spring. Um, I mentioned earlier that the spring area was my favorite, and literally the reason it's my favorite is because the flowers are so nice. I love all the colors, and I love the way that these overhang everything, like all these kind of hanging vine type flowers here. Um, super, super cool. And then the coaster itself, um, maybe not, you know, your straight realism type coaster, but I really like the look of this. Um, I'm a big fan of it. Um, and actually we'll intercept it here and watch the layout go. Yeah. A lot of credit to a lot of people in this, um, AVC helped me with the layout, uh, I just loved the idea. I, there's no coaster that does this of a flying coaster that has like a you're looking up dive like that. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, AVC also pushed me to add more flowers. MK as well. Both of them were like, this should have more flowers. It's spring. It's supposed to be floral. Um, and then uh, if you let the coaster roll out of the station just in normal mode, it goes so slow. And uh, Tim, ITM, I call him Timmy, uh, had a very smart idea to turn turn it into powered launch mode, but then put the powered launch to like oh, eight nice. miles per hour or nine. It It's such a small, like minuscule change, but it makes all the difference in terms of the coaster coming out of that station at oh, like sure. jet speed. You can see it as it rolls out of there, just um, flows nicely. I love this spine, how it kind of comes out of the, the ground and continues up through the the whole thing. And then, it, to me, it sort of harkens across to this fallen tree that you've got here with all the branches kind of coming out. Uh, the brown of the supports really blends well with the structures and uh, of the landscape around it. Thanks. Yeah, this section, um, I don't think I said this, um, there was another park that I was working on with ITM right when we determined we were not going to make playoffs for head dating. And um, that park kind of had a solar punk feel to it. And based off that and what the work I was doing there, I really liked it. I hadn't done a lot of work in spring. So when that got scrapped, I pulled some of it over. So spring is really, I think, focused around the idea of like solar punk um, a civilization where the emphasis is on growing with plants and building with plants rather than cutting them down and then putting a building down. And that's reflected in like the supports of the coaster are kind of meant to look like trees. Um, a lot of the architecture has floral, floral or landscape elements that grow on it or intertwined with it. Um, Which is funny I think, because I just did yeah. uh, my review for Phototrophian the other day. Uh, which kind of has the same yes. the same idea behind it, and I, I'm a big fan of that idea. I love uh, essentially overgrowth in the game, where it's just so super heavy, dense on landscaping. I think it looks really nice, especially with the landscape options that we have to work with these days. Um, it turns into a very nice solution. Definitely, I loved that park by Jaguar. I think I gave it like a 95 or 100. It was... To me, it was just so good and super... I'm really big into expression. Like, mm -hmm. is your park a, a physical expression of something? And it just felt very much like a painting to me. Yeah, it was definitely different than a lot of other things that I think I've seen. And that's not typically a style that I'd go for, but I was all about it. I mean, I was I was there for it. That was a great, great-looking park. Um, 
I love this entrance feature, this thing, and just actually all these little um, structures here, and then these bridges. Um, feels very, um, I don't even know, uh, really, but I, I love the detailing behind the, the colored um, lamps and everything, but then this entry architecture is super neat. Thanks. Yeah, I feel like um, I really hit a stride with Spring, where I was like trying to recreate stuff, and then I kind of hit a groove of like, oh, no, I can just create it because this world is supposed to be defined by like plants and a little bit science fiction. -y. And I was really happy with the outcome. Like, I think it has a good composition in terms of architecture without, um, you know, without feeling overdone. And I think your architecture too is, is rooted more in the kind of fantastical aspects here rather than say, you know, Southeast, Italy or southern Italy, southern France, or you know, north midwest, things like that. Um, even winter castle of sorts, you kind of have this not necessarily centered in any particular place, um, really just landscape taking over or being intertwined within this architecture that just has all sorts of different kind of manner of styles and things. It feels almost a little Art Nouveau in there with the details that you've got and some mm -hmm. of these curves and everything. Uh, and then the, the color variation is, is pretty substantial here. It doesn't necessarily have the, um, you know, through the entire spectrum like you've got over here in summer, but it's got this, you know, blossoming greens and, you know, color coming forth um, like the start of spring, I suppose. Yeah. Um that reminded me of if you look at the one of my favorite things i've said is the transitions um the greens that i used here are much more pale and then compared to summer they're much more lush and full greens like more towards your kelly green mm -hmm. and then in fall they get more um sort of dingy um like darker you know i think we call it olive or puke green mm -hmm. um that was like a very conscious choice, obviously. Um, I was really happy with the impact that you could f follow the the circle of the season and it feel really like not just the park was changing, but the foliage and the, and the temperature of the park was changing. And I think you really get that when you zoom out to this sort of level and you can really see the colorway changing throughout from this to this to this and, you know, ending up in the the darker uh, or the more sparse uh, winter, but not to say that the winter isn't, you know, undetailed. It's got the same amount of detail, just a really different kind of color design. Um, but again, I, I like how we already mentioned the water itself, but how f the flowers and plants kind of take over in some of these spots here, mix up the water and just kind of go off into the, the abyss almost. Very, very cool. This Thanks. Architecture piece here is pretty cool. I was also going to say um, one of my concerns when I submitted the park, oh, I hate to bring it up because I don't want people to be like, oh, well, now that you mentioned, it. but um, I think more than any of the sections, spring feels the most non based in reality, um, which is to be fair, a lot of the source material that I used for it was very uh, fantasy, like sci fi solar punk. Um, and I was, I was concerned that someone might say like, wow, this one section feels like it isn't real. Whereas the other ones feel more real. Um, so I'm glad people didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think you can look at this and then go look at this and say that it doesn't necessarily fit with each other. I think that what I like about it is that the spectrum of realism or I don't even want to say realism, but as far as the grounded in a certain place or or something like that i feel like this is sort of the most defined versus this maybe as the least defined of that but it's really cool mm -hmm. how all of them act on the spectrum and flow into each other nicely enough that you don't really pick up on that as a jarring thing like it, it all feels natural which i think is what you were going for as far as in 
definitely as achieving the blending goes uh and it's pretty pretty obviously done uh so i think well done there it certainly worked out in my opinion thanks so yeah that's that's really the the grand tour of the park um i, I think it's just a cool conceptual thing I, I don't remember the last time i looked at a park that was a donut where you have this specifically left open center point so you're kind of forced to explore this in kind of one direction or another i would hazard a guess that most people explored it in a counterclockwise way just because that's the progression of the seasons and i think it's a it's kind of cool to encourage that but not necessarily force that um it, it's it's cool because it, it gives you the opportunity to explore it in in your own way as you see the different areas but um you're you're still guiding that that design in that you're not really going to jump from spring to fall you're going to kind of work your way through and around it which is cool yeah i think that was very centered like central to our concept when we came up with it i can't say i i'm pretty sure that i did not come up with the idea of the donut i want to say it was maybe avc or itm um we spent a lot of time brainstorming a lot of different ideas for the park when we came up with it. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the donut is like central to the core idea of this central to the core is a weird phrase. <laughs> Anyways. Um, you know, this idea that time is continuing, that you're cycling through the seasons that as you go around the park, the seasons change. Um, I think really turned out great as a concept. And I really think of this park as very much like the exploration of a concept. Absolutely. And I mean, it's great to see you get a full park out. Uh, I mean, the, the size of this is, is cool. I mean, it, it's, I know some people said it was on the smaller side, but I thought it was, it was pretty substantial. I mean, I didn't, I didn't get through it and feel like, Oh, that's it. Like it, it felt like a full developed concept, developed park. Um, so any ideas for what's next? Um, I have a bunch of stuff in the works, hopefully. Um, I'm trying, based on the fact that pe some people thought this was a little small, my next park is going to be far too huge, which maybe means I won't finish it ever. Um, but I'm still hesitant to reveal the uh, the theme until I really get my teeth into it. Um, and then I think I'm going to do another round of uh, Grand Tour at Ooh. any the, right, the uh, the hall section. There you go. Looking forward to that then. Well, well very cool. Uh, thank you for joining me on the uh, the review here. I think it was cool to get some insight into you know, the builder's mind uh, of some of these things. There's a lot of stuff that I, I missed and wouldn't necessarily have picked up on unless you had said, so I appreciate the the insight. Yeah, of course. And thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm always happy to talk about my work, <laughs> uh, particularly once you've spent as much time. I mean, this park took two years from beginning to end, though I didn't work on it constantly. So it's nice to take a look at it um, in full when you've spent so much time on it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I feel like that's something with custom scenery type parks and no custom scenery too. But just the, the amount of time and effort that these, I mean, frankly, art projects take to get from zero to finished is sort of staggering and I mean, you can get all the comments in the world and still it's it, it doesn't necessarily feel like you get you got out of it almost what you put in sometimes so it's cool to mm -hmm. take the time and look at it a second time and a third time and that's kind of half of the reason i started doing these review videos is i know they're a little bit long for some people as we approach 45 minutes here but uh it's <laughs> it, it's to me it it's a deserving look at a job well done and time and effort well spent to create something that's just really cool. And I mean, for me, this one kind of stands out and it's a little different style that I'm typically used to, but it is just done in a very beautiful way. So that's kind of what I like about this sort of thing. Um, I've kept coming back to this one a couple of times as far as just looking at landscaping goes and just seeing how that's all put together. It, it, it all works very well here and i think there's a lot to be learned that you can pull out from this and use for other things definitely uh, i'm glad uh that it was well received um 
I was really happy. You know, there was a point in time where I did not think I would ever finish this park. Um, so to have gotten the time and been able to put it in and get it done, um, I'm just really very happy with how it was received and finally getting it out there and having a new park on my page. Because prior to this, I hadn't released any non-contest stuff in like seven years. Ah, speak for yourself. I'm going on 10 right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that'll change here soon, but uh, it certainly Definitely. does feel good to... to to get done. Yeah. <laughs> One day I'll finish something. <laughs> but, uh, well, congratulations again. Yeah, we're coming. We'll see. But congratulations <laughs> on this uh, great park, and thank you again for, for joining me on this. Um, for everybody else, as... Uh, uh, if you have any suggestions for other parks you want to see or you want to see your own park reviewed or you want to do something like this and uh, come talk to me about your park and what went into it, uh, shoot me a note, let me know, and uh, we'll do something more like this. So um, until next time, thank you guys for watching, and uh, thank you very much, FK. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right, see you guys next have time. Bye.